friends, hear the promises of God. I'm the resurrection and the life. All who believe in me, though they die, yet shall they live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen. Welcome to First Christian Church family, and I trust I hear dings out. Is everybody able to get us? No problem. No problem. Okay, thanks be to God. And welcome to those of you who are watching far away. Um, be patient with us if we have glitches, but it is good to be together even in this virtual way. As we gather in June's church home, Donna's church home, to reluctantly give her back to God, to hear God's promises again, and to testify to the amazing faithfulness of her good, long life. Um, let us be in prayer with one another this day and in the days to come especially for the comfort of her loved ones, family, and friends as they grieve her passing. In our bulletin here, we have an opening prayer that I ask you to say with me, if you can turn to your bulletin. Loving God, send your spirit to be present in our worship, here in this place and everywhere where loved ones are watching. Creator God, we thank you for June for the gift she was to so many lives, and for so many years of love and teaching that she gave. Comfort us in our sadness. Free us to live with the peace of knowing that with you, death is not the last word to life, and that June is somehow in your presence. In the name of the living Christ, It is an honor and a joy that June's children are going to give testimony to her life. I pray that God's peace and comfort and strength be with each of you. Uh, I'm John, her oldest son. Uh, today we celebrate the life of my mother, June Staley. I want to thank everyone for coming and those listening in. We do this under unusual circumstances. Therefore, our ceremony will be structured in a non-traditional way. Though we are only allowed 10 in the sanctuary, we have many who are viewing the service through live streaming over the internet. Instead of the traditional obituary, a much longer version has been drafted, which is more of a story of mom. It has been posted on the website of Meredith Funeral Home, which can be accessed through www.meredithfn.com. Follow the trail of obituary, then you will find mom's picture, you go to detail, and then on the, the obituary. You will find photo, a photo log of mom, and then you will find the opportunity uh, to share your own story about Mom is a fascinating person. I encourage you to access the site and read her life story. After this service, the church will be, uh, we will leave the church immediately and travel 30 miles north to Maple Hill Cemetery, just north of Cesar, Illinois, where many of, our, many of her family is buried, including her late husband, Glenn. Uh, we will be vid uh, uh, there will be a video recorded of both services and posted on the church and the funeral home websites tomorrow. In the sanctuary here now is my brother Bill Staley, my sister Donna Waller, Donna's son Kip, and his friend Joy Savannah. Our rock star family, attendees, are my uncle Jim Staley and his wife Nancy, who drove all the way from Boston to attend us. I am honored that my special partner, Martin Sweeney, coming to meet here all the way from North Dakota and who has provided so much support this week. Mom's life began in 1922. Her father was a coal miner. Eight years later, the Great Depression hit. Times were meager. By the time she was 20, though, 
She had a teaching certificate and was employed by the Sessor School District. She married Dad, Glenn Staley, in 1947, and in 1949 they began raising a family. Mom raised her family and taught school until 1987. She earned a bachelor's degree and a master's degree along the way. Mom and Dad traveled extensively until he passed in 1992. That did stop her, though, from entering uh, what were home years, as she reached out to, and made many friends who traveled, socialized, went to all kinds of events such as concerts and reunions. By, 19, by 2014, she had moved out of her duplex into an independent living facility. That did cause her to slow down, but she still lived a certain quality of life. She passed last week, May 11th. <clears throat> she had many, many notable traits. I'll only mention a couple. First is her strong belief in education. But the second, her humanist side, was truly remarkable. She reached out and served to be an incredible mentor to so many. Family, extended family, friends, students, and many others. She had a special way of deeply, she had in deeply touching those who she mentored. She knows, who knows, how much ink she used up writing personal notes of encouragement over the years. As word got out to, to our family this past week about her passing, I have been besieged by her nieces, nephews, cousins, and many more all week. I have received testimonies like, your mother was an important woman to me growing up. I am saddened by her passing. Second, she was an amazing older sister and friend to me and holds a special place in my heart. My father loved her as well. Your mother was always warm, kind, and interested in what I was doing as a child. I know my dad and mother had great respect and love for her and your family. Next. Cousin June was a favorite of mine and, of course, my father as well. She will be missed. A single lady who chose to adopt children some 10 years ago or more contacted me after hearing her mom's passing. In just a few hours, she had found the very handwritten note of encouragement that she received from mom 10 years before. She went on to say, I feel your, her life story by reading her story my life story by reading her story. She will have won our remembrance of her. I am so glad to have your mom as a loving part of my life. And finally, another testimony, my Uncle Jim, my dad's brother, a man in his 80s, traveled by auto all the way from Boston, Massachusetts to be here today, and his lovely wife, Nancy. I want to extend my special thanks to Don and Bill as, uh, for the care they have given mom in the last few years, well, actually a number of years. Uh, Bill with legal and financial ends, and what can I say about Don? Pretty much a daily attendant over there uh, over so many years. She took mom on weekly drives around the area, literally, until, sh until shutdown happened a few months ago. She made many difficult trips to the unassisted living facility in recent years that were not so pleasant when things did not go well. I want to thank Kip and Joy for assisting Donna at crucial times. Finally, I want to wrap up with one uh, observation. When we drafted Mom's life story, uh, I explained that times were tough due to the Depression. I intentionally used the word austere, did not use the word poor. To find the reason for that, I encourage you to listen to learn the Loretta <coughs> famous song, Cold Miner's Daughter. Thank you, Mom. I love you.
Donna said that would be just so appropriate, and they had already named Amazing Grace as one of June's favorites, and so I'm going to go switch to that, and Hannah has agreed to let her intellectual property be used again as an artist.
She chose God when it worked, and we give thanks to God for her amazing life. How was so much love and teaching and learning accomplished even in 97 years? John and Donna and Bill have given powerful testimony to their mother's faithful life as a child of God, as a follower of Jesus, and members of this church who are watching can offer that testimony also. And were it another day, they wouldn't have done that. She was clearly a follower of Jesus and a very meaningful, very effective, very loving, very wonderful mother, grandmother, great-grandmother, sister-in-law, cousin, aunt, teacher, church member. I want to just share two memories. They have, have shared um, the most important ones, but even in the last few years, um, a couple of times when I visited at the landings with Virginia, it's interesting when someone is in dementia to see what their default settings is, what their default setting becomes. And for June, it was always joy and always love and always welcome. Um, whatever question was asked over and over again, she would always look at Virginia and say, this woman, this woman was one of my best friends, and I love her so much, and I'm so glad she's here. And she would remember, and she and Virginia would talk about being in boys' baseball games and doing things together, um, and of course, church things together. And to see that love and that friendship, not only for Donna, and as she talked about her boys, but also for friends, was a powerful thing. This past Christmas, a group of us went caroling, and as it happened, those who had ears to hear notes um, weren't with us. And there were about eight of us that were really pitiful. And um, we didn't know that. We marched in. June was our first stop. And as we started the first thing, I always kind of hang back because I know I can't carry a tune in a bucket. And waited for someone else to take the lead. And that didn't happen. And we just started laughing at how awful the carols were. And June was sitting in a chair in front of that beautiful tree and just smiling. She loved it. And we had Katie and Marvin with us and baby Wesley, who was then about three months old. And of course, June's eyes were focused on, on baby Wesley. And she set the tone for the rest of our stops. The consolation prize for having to listen to us was in Katie and Marvin's generosity, whoever we were visiting got to hold baby Wesley. And so the next, and, and June's eyes just lit up, and I thought, oh, Lord, have mercy. She's putting him on the spot. How are they going to feel about this 97-year-old lady holding their, their baby? And, and uh, she, of course, was fine, and they were very generous with that, and, and it meant the world to her to hold baby Wesley. And, uh, so she was, she was clearly delighted, and that baby meant, meant everything for her. So we have the example of her life, of all these amazing qualities you've heard about, ones that you heard Paul admonish to the church at Colossae, the ones that you heard Jesus admonish to his disciples to welcome children and to welcome the least of these. And so now the baton is passed to us. And that's not assuming that you weren't already all doing your best. Donna's faithfulness to her mother um, is clearly an example of her mother's um, teachings and of Jesus' teachings. And um, it is also hard to be a child of a loving parent far away. And so um, John and Bill came to visit and, and did their part in caring for their mom. But June's passing leaves a huge void of love and forgiveness and teaching, caring for children, and a wicked sense of humor, to use a Boston phrase. Um, leaves a big void in our world, and so it is up to us to take that baton and to learn from her that even in our grieving and our missing of her, she is instilling in us that example, that love, um, those teachings of, of Jesus, of how we are to live this life, clothed in compassion. So friends, let us with joy, most days, 
with creativity and love and whatever gifts were given to us, continue to follow Jesus all the days of our lives. Thanks. Derek was not able to be with us this morning. He is hopefully getting a crown or getting something to get a tooth fixed. But he recorded something yesterday afternoon for us, so let us listen.
Gracious God, remind us to live a life of gratitude, that no matter how tough the day, let us give thanks to you. For that day, rain or shine, warm or cold, difficult, boring, or joyful. We give you thanks, O oh God, for your love, your love that sparked June's love, that was her example and her teaching, and that is ours. We give thanks for her life and give thanks for Jesus' promise in his resurrection that with you, death is not the last word to life. And we give thanks that June has been welcomed home. We pray your healing and your comfort for difficult last days. We give thanks for those who cared for her over the years at Liberty Village and the Landings and Integrity. We know that your spark, your light, worked through so many of them, and we give you thanks. I give thanks for John and Donna and Bill's courage in speaking today. They have done their mother proud with their words and with their lives. And for Jim, for his witness of travel, for being here, and for his dear friend, his sister-in-law. We give thanks for church friends, for Lila and Mary Ellen and Virginia and Rachel. And surely, and so many others who have gone before, for those friendships, for that service, for all the meals that were cooked, and children who were taught, laughs that were had, cards that were played, leadership that was given, communion that was served, we give thanks. Be with. June's loved ones in the days and weeks and months and years to come. Let us be comfort to one another in your name, O oh God. And let us continue, as she has taught us, to be faithful followers of the living Christ. So it is now into your hands, O oh merciful God, that we commend your servant, June Staley, Welcome her, we humbly pray, as a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, and a daughter of your own redeeming. Receive her into the arms of your mercy, O God, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the company of saints in the light. And then help us gather ourselves up, and in the days to come, Go back into the world to be faithful followers of Jesus, who taught his first disciples to pray. Our Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Before I give the benediction, let me say that I'm going to unplug the laptop and walk it around so that those of you from, who are streaming from home can see the rest of this setting, all the amazing flowers that are here for June, um, and to see her casket. But first, let me give the benediction. Um, again, words from the Apostle Paul, and then a more contemporary one. Friends, go in peace, be of good courage. Hold fast to what you know is good and return to no person evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, and honor all persons. And let me add, honor the earth, rejoicing always in the presence of God and God's Holy Life is short and we have too little time to gladden the hearts of those who walk the way with us. Oh, be quick to love. Make haste to
be kind. And God's people said, Amen. Amen. Okay, and I don't know if I unplug the but we will see. So you get to let me see what's in there. Yep. Oh, and you should see that window. 